Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. We're at chapter 9, verses 27 to 33 is our reading today. We'll read it and then talk about it for a minute. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is the righteous one, and I and my people are the wicked ones. Make supplication to the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be hail no longer, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were ruined, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in bud. But the wheat and the spelt were not ruined, for they ripened late. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord, and the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured on the earth. So the plague is launched, and down comes the hail and fire and thunder, and apparently it didn't take too long here, and oh, surprise, we have a summons to Pharaoh. And so Aaron and Moses go to visit with Pharaoh. He's called, calls for them right away. And Pharaoh makes this very unusual threefold admission. I mean, we haven't seen anything quite like this from Pharaoh yet, but here it comes. I'm wicked, I'm wrong, Pharaoh says. First of all, I, Pharaoh, I'm guilty. And then in contrast to that, you're God, God is righteous. And then I and my people are wicked. <laughs> so so this is a, this is a very strong uh, line. Pharaoh is saying the right things. Uh, what he's saying is, is true. But he's making these admissions, and then he's ready to let them go. He asks for relief. He's even in some kind of a, a negotiating mood, which is very unusual. So far, we really haven't seen a lot of that, have we? And we're not going to. So Pharaoh makes some promises here, too. He's going to let the people go, at least some of the people. Now, that's, that's really nothing new. He's done this before. He's made promises and then bounced back and, and didn't do what he said, right? He reneged on his promises. But here he comes, and he makes another promise, and... Yeah, not a surprise, I guess, at this point. And yet again, where are we? You know, is God going to say, ah, you know, you, you haven't been faithful the previous times, so no more promises, just destruction. No, God is going to immediately, when after Moses prays, God's going to immediately stop the thunder and the rain and the hail. He just, God is faithful again. Pharaoh, well, we'll see tomorrow what happens with Pharaoh's reaction once God takes it away. But again, God is faithful every single time. God is faithful, and there's something you can take to the bank every single time. Guess what? Always, your whole life, every trial, every challenge you'll ever have, guess what? God is faithful. A lesson for us. So God's going to mercifully respond to this request. Now, there's two or three verses in here all about the harvest, and it's like barley and grain and wheat and so on. And why is that all in there? Well, you and I, we're living in a time the last century or two centuries uh, up until that time, a life on planet Earth was very much centered around agriculture. Uh, farmers, your ancestors were farmers, I'm telling you, virtually every person who will ever view this video, everybody was farming, and there you had to, or, you know, that was where your food came from. And so, yeah, the people who would read this tale or hear this retold what happened, when they heard about the thunder and the rain and everything, they would immediately know, oh, this must have t taken down their crops. What happened? What was the timing? So here in the scriptures, we're given, you know, exactly, you know, when it was, how it affected the, the crops, because that would be a point of interest for anybody looking at this. Now, to you and I today, yeah, we go down and we, we buy it all in packages at the store and bring it home. So it's, it's kind of harder for us to get that. But that's, I think, one reason why that's there. The, the world of the Bible, the world uh, up until very recent time has been a very agricultural thing. So, so yeah, we see that. And maybe there's a reminder there about something something that's a little bit skewed in our world. And maybe we should know a little bit more about gardening and be preparing to grow more and more of our own food. Anyway, we will go onward and let's see what happens after the, the storm relents. So that'll be tomorrow morning and we'll see you then. Hey, just want to remind you, by the way, too, uh, Mondays at noon, I uh, do a little quick YouTube live tune in at that time. It's Eastern time, America, Detroit time. Uh, tune on in and stop in, and we'll go. We'll recap some of the things we've done over the past week, the devotional uh, text passages we've looked at, and the latest other video or two that we've done. Just did a video um, yesterday, uh, Francis Fear and COP28. You might be interested in that, but we'll talk about that on Monday in the in the YouTube live.